So, so there's there's many of those circular wow. grasslands with no trees, many spots like that. And essentially, the idea is that there was some sort of an airburst that created a shotgun blast where all these smaller particles, or smaller particles, but maybe the size yeah. of this table, basically slammed into the ground. Well, I'll tell you where it is now, and we're out on the kind of the I call the Carolina Bays. Is this similar yeah. to what the Carolina Bays look like? Well, we'll call them we'll call them up. Google Carolina Bays. Okay, you tell right. me. Carolina Bays. I don't mean to be suspenseful, but it, no suspense is killing me. Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah. Okay, everywhere. so they look very similar, and they're full of water. Just some of them are. Okay. And those are the ones that the public that lives around them think of those, and they know, well, yeah, that's a unique geological feature is Carolina Bay. It's a lake. But little do they know that when you go look at them carefully, you can see them everywhere in the landscape. That they, they roads go around them instead of through them. The churches sit on the rims, and they bury people in the sandy rims, the, all the graveyards on the rims. So it actually has affected human settlement patterns mm. where these – wetlands are because they're all wetlands some are um actually lakes but the curious thing danny is that they orient themselves i guess you could say they are oriented in a particular direction what do you mean by that so if you are in new jersey and you find a carolina bay or you see one or you see it through lidar which is very um fine elevation data, which you get with lasers, um, they point more westerly in, say, New Jersey. You get down to the Carolinas, and they point northeast. Then you get down to Georgia, and they point north. So they all converge. See that bottom left? Mm. If you'll scroll yeah, up. Yeah, click on that bottom left with the yellow. Yeah. See that, Steve? Now, yeah. it's, now it's your top left. Yep. Try to blow that up. Yeah. So... This was my dream, and I didn't have the wherewithal to do it, but others came along, and a wonderful there guy, Michael Davius, went into full obsession mode for several years, and he went and categorized, calculated, defined every single Carolina Bay. Okay. And you often see in you know casual mentions of them that they're 500,000 of them, but they're actually, we've only gotten to 55,000. And they're all pointing. So if you see up there in the north, mm -hmm. they're just a little bit more west. And if you look down in the south, they're pointing north. And that's like a blood spatter pattern. That says that these things are somehow drawn from a particular location. Right? So you're it's saying not you're, random. So in that top up by like the Great Lakes where that center piece is, that central that's spot right. is, are you saying like a is the idea that a large comet hit there and then debris is like shot out and hit the Carolina Bays? Precisely, Dr. Jones. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you call them secondary impacts. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that it kicked something into the Carolinas. So what did it kick into the Carolinas? And also in Nebraska and Kansas and Dr. West and I were the first to note those in LIDAR and said, holy shit, they're all over Kansas and Nebraska, and they point back the <laughs> other way. <laughs> they're pointing to the same place. Mm, pointing and towards that yeah, center impact area. Exactly. And um, so, yeah, where were we? Um, are there any more? Yeah. Are those the only ones you found? You would think there would be more in that there's a big empty area in like the bottom left. Excellent question. It's the nature of the soil there that in the carolinas this sand you know it's a sandy coastal plain all up the east coast mm -hmm. and that's an important component and you have that same with a shallow groundwater table mm -hmm. all right so it's sand with water immediately beneath it same thing out there in nebraska right that it's a sandy soil so where you don't see them where there might have been things that landed are the red clay country of arkansas Right? It's not sand. It would have eroded or otherwise not shown itself as clearly mm. is the idea. Okay. So it only shows up in sandy soils. Um, and yeah, and it's a mystery 
wrapped in enigma stuck deep in a black box so what is the conventional oh. theory on these things like if you ask academic geologists what happened and what the explanation is for those carolina bays what do they say yeah it, actually let me stick with the extraordinary explanation and I'll, then i'll shift to that that it was proposed in um the journal geology by a good friend antonio zamora who's also kind of a citizen scientist like myself but he managed to get it published in geology and he proposed, I think it was 2015, I could be wrong, um, he wrote a paper that said what happened was, his hypothesis was that a fragment of a comet, or, or say an asteroid, slammed into the ice sheet above Michigan at that time. So there was up to two miles of ice that covered everything 13,000 years ago, and that it excavated immediately, blew out into the lower atmosphere, gigantic chunks of ice, as crazy as that sounds, okay? Mm -hmm. And those hypersonic, hypersonic ice boulder chunks is what was launched. But mm -hmm. immediately prior to that, he calculated that it would have caused a tremendous earthquake that would have shook that sandy um, soil with a low water table and that liquefies sand. You can go and see earthquakes in Japan where it'll, cars will just have the bumper showing and it'll just be sand. Because mm. if you have liquefied sand, like water and sand, and then you shake it, it becomes like quicksand and things dump into it. So it would have shaken the ground and then the boulder would have landed on it, excavated out the bay-like feature. And all of them are perfect ellipses in the Carolinas, mathematical ellipses, which suggest a cone an ellipse is created by a cone. If you take like the dunce cap and pass it through a flat plane, it leaves an ellipse. That that same pressure wave came down and caused those perfect ellipses. So that's the Zamora hypothesis, and that's way out there on the edge and not accepted by the mainstream. What does the mainstream tell you? They say it is the aeolian lacustrin solution hypothesis. <laughs> and red flags go up right away. If you're a scientifically minded person, you'd like, well, they had to come up, they had I had to come up with three different processes to get there. Aeolian, lacustrine, What's that? What's that and mean solution. Yeah. Aeolian means wind. Lacustrine means lake. Mm -hmm. And solution means uh, dissolve. I believe. <laughs> and so what they're saying, what the mainstream tells us, is that there were powerful winds being swept off the glaciers during the ice ages. And in four different periods, I think, is the way the mainstream kind of goes with it now, because they did some dating on them. They said they were created at different times, some up to several thousand years apart, up to 10,000 years apart. It happened again that these winds came down and blew <laughs> puddles <laughs> into perfect ellipses, right? That wind, water, and sand creates an ellipse. Now, or, you know, a circular depression. What is this, Stephen? Uh, so, so George was talking about how if you shake sand, it'll mm -hmm. liquefy. Uh -huh. And this is, that's right. I mean, it literally says liquefying with liquefaction. So I guess that's the process. Awesome, but yeah. this, is a, this is an earthquake that has liquefied the ground to the point that the vehicles have sunk into it. And of course, that ground is hard now. You could walk right out there. It's just the fact that when you shake the hell out of it and you got sand and water, it turns into a, a, just a slush. Oh, wow. Right? So you would have had that slush because the earthquake hit, and then the boulders landed into it, and it splashed out the bays. Mm. Now, that's an extraordinary hypothesis. Many may reject it, but I reject the fact that if you just take wind and blow it on these features, it would have created 55,000 perfectly elliptical lakes, all po pointed the same direction, despite being separated in their creation times by tens of thousands of years. So think of that. They're 55,000. They say they formed in four different periods. Why in the hell, 10,000 years later, would those winds conspire to put it in the same direction again? Or did it go take all the previous bays and reorient them? Right? Mm -hmm. It seems like if it was done in four different periods, you would be able to say, well, here's genetic class one, here's class two, here's class three. You can tell their time of when they were created because the winds were slightly different. But those winds, according to the mainstream, conspired each time. To be exactly the to same. To be exactly the same. Mm. And I have a lot of trouble with that. Where I go with the bays personally, 
Well, first of all, I call them the kooky caboose of the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis because we included them in the first paper because we had some intriguing evidence. But it was not the best evidence, and we quickly found much more evidence, much better evidence. And when you're making a case in a scientific publication, it's a little bit like a courtroom. You try to bring in your best evidence, and that doesn't mean everything that you know about the case you're going to say because some of it might be sketchier than others. So when we had much better evidence and some new people on the team that weren't comfortable with the bays, all cool, we, we dropped them off. But they've hung to the train of the younger dry impact hypothesis as the kooky caboose that you can't quite let go, that will always be connected to it. And the public will speculate, which is entirely appropriate, but just as a matter of, you know, scientific efficiency, we've, we, we leave them out of the subject now. Okay. Yeah. Now, can we find a photo in Russia from Tunguska that where we can see an aerial photo and it, like that compares the bays in North Carolina to the impact in Russia? Is there any similarity? Well, there are not many of them, and I don't know. No one has ever paid too much attention. Huh, they do come up with crater, doesn't it? But there's that one intriguing picture there on the right. Like, like an aerial a, photo. Yeah. They're, they're, Just one. Yeah. Well, they generally show the same picture, but you can... Um, no. And hey, this is my speculation. You don't even find this in Zamora's papers and stuff. I just always thought it was odd that when Kulik went out there, he immediately dug in what I believe he termed a number of neat oval bogs. Now, maybe the situation was there that they regrew and some are still evident, mm -hmm. whatnot. Uh, in other words, the forest regrew. Who knows? But he went out there and did the exact same thing that in the 1930s people were doing in the Carolinas, which is look in neat oval bogs for rocks that weren't there because it, it just didn't happen the way that it seemed. Mm. So I found it very, very intriguing. Um, and like I say, I kind of passed the baton. So I was the bay nut for from about 2000, well, 97. Oh, then my name got associated with Google. So for years, I would come up with Carolina Bays and people contacted me and all that stuff. But in 2005, these other scientists contacted me and we published in 2007. And then that initiated um, what has been at least 40 or 50 papers from our side and you know close to 200 total back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to uh, – argue, debate, whatnot. That, that top left him. one is wild, how perfectly circular that is. Yeah, I took that picture, actually. Did you really? I did. Sticking my head out of a Cessna. And... Wow. Look mm. at that, man. Yeah. Well, awesome. yeah how did yeah. Wynn do that? That's nice to see somebody else pick up that picture. Um, yeah, Wynn didn't do that. Mm. First of all, there's a wonderful fellow. He was a lawyer in Sumter, South Carolina, who wrote a book called The Mysterious Carolina Bays, Henry Savage. And like I say, it's, you know, kind of a legal thing. What's your evidence and whatnot? And he called bullshit on the wind water hypothesis. He said, just no way. And one of the things he said, he said, anybody familiar with a, a, a southern wetland of tangled vines and trees and herbaceous shrubs and all that stuff knows that immediately you're not going to get a whole lot of formation of stuff. If you're wet, you're going to kind of stay where you are. It's kind of hard to blow that around. Now, that said, you did have different conditions 20,000 years ago, but they're certainly not for me now. My bottom line is that the Carolina Bays were all created at once. Whatever in hell made that did not occur again and again over thousands and thousands of years. Mm -hmm. I think it is plainly obvious, at least to myself, right. that they all occurred at once. So what the hell happened? So... And additionally, I know Randall talks about what, like what you just mentioned when it, oh, the ice good. sheet was hit. Yes, it sir. carried massive pieces of ice all yeah. across the continent. Mm -hmm. And there's evidence of rocks that were frozen inside of those pieces of ice that show up like in the Scablands or like the, the northwestern part of the United States. Yeah. Rocks that are from a completely other, another part. They're, they're yeah. native to a completely other separate part like northern canada I that's right where it was in canada and they were rafted down there in the floods right that's right and they're left behind its giant erratic boulders mm. um yeah like how else would those rocks have ended up there random yeah. rocks yeah well even the mainstream will tell you that's and they're catastrophic enormous. in a sense i mean they're the size of houses yeah. and they had to be carried by an iceberg the size of a aircraft carrier right 
right? See that photo there on the left, uh, one off the top left? It's of Michigan. There you go. This one. Okay. Blow that up. So that's where they all point back to is um, Saginaw Bay, oh. right? Which is the thumb of Michigan or the <laughs> between the thumb and the hand, right? See how there's a divot? Over there, see how Michigan's like a hand, right? Mm, yep. And then you've got Saginaw Bay up there right. in the northeast. Right. Well, that's what they all point to. Kind of interesting to see that it's a big divot wow. in the yeah. landscape. It's like yeah. something was excavated. And, of course, it's not a crater, mm. but you had two miles of ice protecting it. Right. So could it be that whatever hell occurred that day when it slammed into that location— mm. That's the remnant scar of what happens when you hit a mile thick ice sheet with a hypersonic bullet from space. That it, the ice sh shatters and scatters, and then you are left with what now is kind of the Saginaw Bay feature. So that's the kind of intriguing stuff that they didn't go and go to Saginaw Bay and then draw lines to the bays. What they did was drew lines off of the long axis of the bays. And then look, well, where did it point? Holy shit. Mm. It points to a place that actually looks like something kind of strange happened. 